What's up? Good morning. Friday, April 17th out here at Castlemont Farm. Checking on the work that's been happening and it looks like some big moves have been made. I want to give a shout out to all those who came out this week. It looks like yesterday you guys did a major move. Not sure if you did this wood chipping all the way down, but it's beautiful. Whoever did that, great work. Also noticing a lot of weeding happening in this herb row, which was always needed. So much appreciated for that. And now we're going to get to the work of the day. One thing just to point out is we have our garlic here, which we're just waiting to finish. That's going to transition into cucumbers. At the top of the bed is a bunch of greens right here. Those are all flowering. I would harvest all those greens this week and then um, pull the plants so that that area can start to get prepped. Row number two, you guys pulled all that garlic and now it's all the way planted down to the potatoes with uh, summer squash, zucchini, different tricolor mix. And bed number three, peppers from the onions all the way down. Last week on, or this past couple days on, what was it, Wednesday, came through here and seeded beans. So this whole row is seeded. And so now one, two, three, these middle three rows are ready for summer. Just waiting on this garlic to be ready so we can transition that row. And then we have row five, which you've prepped and is all ready for seeding. Row six, which is lettuce, still growing, not quite ready yet. And row seven, broccoli, all planted and just ready to grow. Great job. So the work now of the week is going to be getting this bean row ready. We have to acquire some seeds. We're trying to do some black eyed peas. We also have Cherokee Trail of Tear Bean, which is a, a pole bean. It's a black bean. We grew those the last couple years. Great variety. So we have those seeds saved. And so the work to do here is to start building the trellises since that's a pole bean. I have secured some green posts, which I've stashed back here in the mallow, the mallow jungle, right under this elderberry. So they're right down there. That's the flowering elderberry. The posts are stashed in there. There's a ton of them. We're gonna use some of those posts for the cucumber trellis, but there's plenty of posts for trellising the beans. And what I would do is I would paste this out. We can do half of this area black eyed peas, half of this area Cherokee Trail of Tear. So paste it out, mark the middle. You can grab a stake and just put it in the middle. And then what you wanna do is paste out your posts. The way you're gonna use those posts to get them in is there's this uh, tool called a post, post pounder. It's like a metal tube, cylinder, hollow on the inside with two handles. And I believe the one in the shed here on the farm is gray or blue. And I can send you more info on just how that looks. But basically I would space these beans every two to three feet apart. So that's gonna be a lot of posts you're putting in every two to three feet. Now we don't have enough to do this entire row because we still wanna do our cucumber trellis, but uh, there will be enough to do for sure um, a good section of that row, okay? So you'll count out how many we have over there. Take about half of those. Next item on the list. I was just seeing um, the weeding that's happening, which is beautiful. Only thing to be mindful of is I'm noticing folks, it's just, you know, mindfulness, right? While we're working on one thing, we kind of forget about other things. We run our wheelbarrows across the beds that are already seated. We step on them, we leave piles of weeds. And that's only just gonna encourage snails and pests to eat our beans as they're germinating. So we just gotta be careful of that. Even though this is such needed, great work, leaving these piles right on the beds, if these beans start to germinate, prime slug habitat. So even if we just pile them up away from the bed or just move them back that way, that would be great. As we walk down to the front, I was going to say we need to weed these onions and leeks because I haven't checked on them, but it looks like you beat me to it. So that's great. That's exactly what we want to do. I don't think these onions are going to get super big. See how they're already starting to yellow? I think we could start harvesting 
This is row number two. Red Cipollini onions. I think we could pull those as a spring onion. And these leeks are still pretty little. I would leave them since we're pulling these red onions. That should be enough for the next couple weeks. And that brings us to this chard right here, which you can see is all starting to bolt. When it starts to get fat stems and stand up, that's bolting. So what we wanna do is harvest all the leaves off of that, and then pull these plants and transition this area. And we'll plant some more alliums. So the plan to do out here is just keep the onions and leeks in the front section of the farm, because it gets a little more shade. And that way they're all in the same area and we just rotate them. So if we can transition this bed the same way we did this bed. So we'll broad fork it, break up the clumps. If you think it needs compost, add that. It's a great amendment. This soil is really heavy and wet here. So that will help it a lot. And then rake it smooth. Now this is ready to be seeded. So that's exactly how we want to prep this area over here. Final things I was noticing is back over here at the top. This is a flower section. There's sweet peas growing. There's ranunculus and there's a bunch of weeds. That's not such high priority, but if we want to get through there um, and do some weeding in there, I see that the herb row is probably a little bit more uh, pressing, especially given we have this blackberry coming in. We don't want to let that take over. And we want to keep our, our edges just the way you did here. Cut back this mint. It needs to be cut back. It's happier when it's cut back. Create those clear pathways so people have access. If this is what we want, rosemary growing, then mint should not be here. If we want oregano growing, the mint should not be here. The mint is out of control. Unfortunately, it's what it is. Um, last thing is these brassicas here. They're all flowering. They didn't do much, but we could get a nice couple bunches. If we want to pull those out. So we'll pull out all the flowering greens. This is bed seven at the bottom, bed number one at the top. Pull those out, flip those that, that soil. Pull out this charred bed number six at the bottom. Flip this whole area. Start to do your posts in bed number five and continue working on the weeds. Great work, y'all. Appreciate it. Can't wait to see what you come up with next week. All right, peace.